where it's a crazy flexible, almost fluid-like. In this video, we will look into what exactly it is about their anatomy which enables such flexibility and what extremes of movement they can achieve. The ferret's observed flexibility is enhanced by its long, sausage-like appearance. It might seem at first glance that ferrets have unusually long necks, but this is at least partially due to visual trickery. Let's take a look under the skin, so to speak, and view the ferret skeleton. Ferrets have, like most mammals, seven neck vertebrae. This is the same as humans, so what else causes this long neck? A ferret's natural body posture can see the head, neck and torso all aligned in a straight line. The shape and position of the skull makes it hard to determine exactly where the neck starts. At the other end, the shoulders and start of the chest are so narrow that it makes it difficult to tell where the neck ends. Looking at the skeleton, we see that the neck is therefore perhaps less exaggerated than it appears in real life. The opposite is true for humans, where the shape of the skull and shoulders actually masks the true length of the neck. Now, it's not all visual trickery, of course, and whilst ferrets and humans both have seven neck vertebrae, those of the ferret are longer bones, whereas those of the human are short and stumpy. Moving on from the neck to the main chest and abdomen area, this again comes across visually as long in a ferret, but this time there is no such visual trickery and much to do with anatomy. Whilst a human has 12 ribs and thoracic vertebrae, a ferret has 15. Then, in the lumbar area below the rib cage, ferrets and humans both have 5 vertebrae. As stated earlier for the neck, a ferret's thoracic and lumbar vertebrae are also each much longer, relatively speaking, than those in the human skeleton. So, the additional vertebrae, combined with their longer size, explains why a ferret body is so long compared to a human. We've discussed so far what makes a ferret's body long, but now let's look into what makes it super flexible. The spine is made up of many vertebrae, but in between each vertebrae are intervertebral discs. These are designed to provide cushioning between the bones and to permit movement. Such movement can be expansion or compression of the spine, it can be sideways movements, or it can be forward or backward movements. A combination of these allows the movements we typically expect of a torso. In a ferret, these intervertebral discs are exceptionally flexible and elastic. This enables a much greater degree of movement than in humans. Whilst a human can rotate their spine through only around 70 degrees, a ferret can rotate theirs 180 degrees, which means a ferret's rear feet could be facing the floor while its front feet are facing the ceiling. Perhaps the most characteristic movement of a ferret's body is its ability to fold itself in half in all directions. These abilities are enabled not only by the elastic intervertebral discs, but also due to the shape of the vertebrae themselves. In a human, the vertebrae have large protrusions, called processes, to the sides and out of the back. These attach to ligaments and tendons, and hence onto muscles. Large processes provide good support for core strength, but they physically restrict the extent to which the spine can bend. In a ferret, these processes take on a smaller, curved shape, which reduces to a minimum the restriction on any spinal movements. Let's see how all this works in practice. A good example is how a ferret can turn 180 degrees on itself within a small tunnel. This tunnel here is 10 centimetres or 4 inch square. When a ferret decides it wants to turn around, it doesn't just bend in half in one go in the middle. Rather, it creates a bend initially at its neck, and then this bend flows down the full body, almost snake-like. This evidence is the degree of flexibility across the full length of the spine. Even large hops, which almost fill the 100mm space, manage a rather effortless manoeuvre. Turning in tight space is not a ferret's only party trick. It's also adept at escaping through impossibly small gaps. Let's look again at the ferret skeleton side on. We can see that the ribcage is the biggest part of the skeleton, 
which might naturally lead one to assume that the ferret's ability to squeeze through a tight gap is limited to the size of its ribs. But not so. In fact, it is the skull which determines the minimum gap through which a ferret can squeeze. The reason for this is that, like all mammals, a ferret's rib cage is not all bone. The part of the rib that attaches to the breastbone, the sternum, is made of cartilage. This image shows the extent of cartilage on a human rib cage, accounting for only a small fraction of the ribs. On a ferret, however, the cartilage forms a much greater percentage of the ribs, almost 50% in some cases. Cartilage is a more flexible material than bone, and when combined with the elastic cartilage joining the ribs to the spine at the back, it results in the ability of the ferret to contract its rib cage around its heart and hence flatten itself to squeeze through small gaps. Let's see this in practice. Yazoo here has a small skull, around 3 cm tall, with a rib cage in a resting position at perhaps 5 cm at its tallest. Yet, despite having 5 cm tall ribs, she can very easily squeeze out of this cage, which has 3 cm gaps. If we pause her escape here for a moment, we can see the height of the gap through which she is squeezing compared to the extent of her torso still yet to go. Yet a second later, that same large torso has now constricted to fit through the much smaller gap. Reduce those gaps slightly to 2.5 centimeters and she cannot escape. Put simply, if the head fits, the body will follow. Finally, just for fun, let's see how they get on with fitting through a circular hole. Whilst Yazoo could fit through a 30mm wire fence, she's very far from fitting through a hole which is 30mm diameter. Next size up on my drill set was 38mm or 1.5 inches, and again this is simply not working out for her. The next step up to 2 inches or 51mm, and we see finally we have a hole where the head can comfortably fit through. But if we slow the video down here, we can clearly see that she's having to squeeze her chest to escape. Let's see how a large hob gets on with the same challenge. Clearly the 2 inch hole is a no go. But moving up to 60mm or 2 and 3 8 inch gives an extra space that is easy to get out. This was no mean feat though. Look at the size of his chest and abdomen compared to the size of the hole. Well done fella. Thanks for watching. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe and try out some of our other videos.